Hi, welcome to Embedded Programming. And today we're going to start in section six. And if we look at the work we've done before, we went through section five where we talk all about motor control and we said that, oh, hey, you know what? Time to try and get this robot platform up. Now, at the time when I created this directory for section six, I call it ESP8266 robot one because I was so certain at the time that I was going to use the ESP8266. But given all the things that we saw with it and with the pulse rate modulator module requiring 10 bits instead of eight, we can use that. So I'm going to rename this directory to section six robot platform revision one. Why revision one? Because I might change things along the way, either the platform itself or whatever so for now we're gonna leave off what we're gonna use and we can try and figure it out in section six what exactly we're doing my goal is at the end of section six we should have something that we can log into remotely and either control from a remote application or log into it to the robot itself and control it so let's see what we have for today so like i said in the last video that i bought a raspberry pi and uh, let me show you. So here's the Raspberry Pi website, and you can go to product. Um, there's the Raspberry Pi 4, but that's not the one that I got. I got the Raspberry Pi A+, Plus, which is this guy. And um, the form factor, there are a couple of reasons that I got this one. Um, the form factor, the shape and size of it, um, for the Raspberry Pi, this guy, I don't really need all these USB port. Um, I didn't need an Ethernet RJ45 port because again, I'm gonna be putting this on the robot, so I decided to go for this guy instead, this one. Um, all right. And so once I decided to get that, then I also picked up a motor driver for the Raspberry Pi. So let's do the unboxing here. And so we'll start with the Raspberry Pi 3 Model A. And there's some documentation, but we're not going to use documentation, so um, nothing else in there. I'll put that to the side. So this is what this looks like. Um, almost credit card size, not quite credit card size. Maybe the width of a credit card, but and it's not quite square. Um, it's a bit longer on this edge than across there. But it looks like as um, you know that camera interface. Yeah, there's I see camera there, and then this is display. That's fine. That's nice, just in case we want to add a display to our board. But there's this 40 bit, um, 40 pin header here. Now, I have, let me get it. After getting that board, then I realized something. So I showed this Raspberry Pi before. Um, and you can see this look pretty much as the same shape as the Raspberry Pi 4 that I, I had on the screen there just now. I'm not going to go back to it. And this is the groove shield for this board. And you can see it, um, oh boy, I'll fix that later. And you can see it uh, mates nicely with this board. And this is a 26 pin header. So I thought that uh, when I got this and the motor shield that I will be able to put on this groove shield on there um, with this, the motor shield and I'll be off to the races and see how far I get with this. Now, uh, as I just showed, this is 26 pin, this is 40 pin. So this groove shield is not going to work with this. So I'll worry about getting a new groove shield if um, this motor controller and uh, Raspberry Pi seems to work. Now the nice thing about this, so in terms of features, is that this has Wi-Fi built in, so that's good. Uh, what's different about a Raspberry Pi compared to like an Arduino? This is a full computer. It has HDMI for video, it has audio output, and with USB, you can connect keyboard and mouse and all this other good stuff. So I can run a full-fledged Linux operating system on this. And then with that, compared to with the Raspberry, um, the Arduino and the ESP8266, which is sort of Arduino compatible, you're not running a full operating system, you're sort of running embedded code and that's it. Now we can run a full operating system like Linux on this guy. With that in mind, if we get Linux going, we should, I'll show you, I haven't done it yet, but I've done it on my other Raspberry Pi board. 
Um, it should still work the same way for this board. Once we get that up and going with the Wi-Fi that's built in, then I should be able to sort of move my laptop onto the robot. If you remember what I wanted to do before was to be able to have a, my desktop, from my desktop, be able to run Go application, connect over for Matter to the robot platform over Wi-Fi and be able to control it. And the, the advantage there is that I can evolve my software in the desktop much faster. Well, if this can run a full-fledged version of Linux and it has that kind of capability, then if it's on the robot platform, then I can just SSH into the robot platform and compile and run my code or SSH uh, my code over to the um, to this board and just restart it. So I think this might be the way to go, but we'll see. I'll play with it. Um, there's some other capabilities too. With Visual Studio Code, I can actually do rem remote Go development if I wanted to. But even if I have to do the development on my laptop, I can just copy it over to the board. All right. So this is the board. This is the driver um, motor shield um, that I just removed. Um, I haven't used it yet. Like you just saw, I just go to the box. There's the power header. Um, it says there's a power LED there. Um, motor supply. So I don't know what this header is for. I'll have to read the documentation if there's any. Oh, and there's none. But I'll go find some. So it looks like motor one, two, three, and four. So we can support four motors with this board. That's hell of a lot. Um, <laughs> I don't think I need that many. Um, so we have these two. IR and I1 and IR2, I think that's infrared, that's already built in. And then there's ultrasonic. So they have some sensors at least built into this board. So that should be fairly easy to hook up those things. Um, so let's do this. Let me show you how I prepare the micro SD card. Because remember, this is running a full operating system, so you don't really upload it. You use a micro SD card. Let me show you how I prepare the micro SD card for this, and then we'll see if we can get it up and running. And maybe we might get to test the, this board or we can probably just end it by controlling the LED, show that we have control of the LED with some Go code. We'll see. I mean, once we have our operating system on here like Linux, we can still write Go code. So let's switch now to the desktop. So, okay. Um, if you want, you can go take a look at that board. But basically, um, if you go to downloads, but there's this Noobs and Raspbian. And basically with Noobs, you just download um, the bootloader and you extract it to an SSD. So for example, um, you can see this is an SSD that I have in my computer and I just extract the file that I downloaded. And just in case you want to know what you're supposed to do and what is the correct way of installing the files, you should check out this readme instruction. It tells you exactly what you need to do on a different platform, how to format an SD card if it's not formatted, where these files are supposed to be. So basically, once you download that archive and, um, and explode it on your computer, just read this instruction that readme file. So now that I have this, I can extract it. So I'm going to eject it from my computer here. And I'm going to take it out. So here it is. This is what I had in my car. In my, um, this micro SD card was inside this little sleeve thing. And then now I'm going to put it in here. And I'm going to take this over to my computer now, connect my monitor to this guy, connect a keyboard here, and then power right here. And then let's see if we can get it to start up and I'll configure it. I'm going to try and see if I could show you this. I can't use my recording software, so I'll have to use my phone to show you exactly what I'm doing. Okay, so I have that Raspberry Pi A connected to keyboard which i have right over here and also to my monitor and so now i'm going to connect power and turn it on but before i do i'm going to try and set up this phone to record the screen so you can see exactly what it looks like when it come up and how to configure it so if we can't get everything done in this video don't worry i'll make another video and show you everything so you can see the process and hopefully if you're trying to reproduce the same thing, you wouldn't get lost. Okay, I'm back on my desktop. So one of the things I mentioned when um, I was showing the screen 
is a fungus documentation for enabling SSH. And so the way you get to this is by going to Raspberry Pi. And then if you go to downloads, and even though we use noobs, that was just the installer, we actually install Raspbian. And so click on that and then click on installation. Now when you get there, it's gonna actually take you to this part, but what you wanna do is click on documentation and then scroll down and go to remote access because that's what you wanna be able to do is how do you access your Raspberry Pi remotely and click on SSH. And then you can follow, if you did the graphical installation, then you can go through this way of doing it or you can do it from the command line regardless if you have the um, graphical installer or not. All right, um, and let's bring that into focus here. Um, by the way, since I have it now, let's see how big is my SD card? Uh, 32 gigs, wow, that's pretty big. Okay, so now that's coming up. Let's, from my desktop, let's ping again, see when it's up. Um, actually, while that's doing that, let's go over to GoBot and let's see how to test Raspberry Pi or get use GoBot on Raspberry Pi. So scroll down, scroll down, and where is Raspberry Pi? Oh, there it is, RPi. And so it says essentially installed, do all that good stuff. And so LED is seven. And then, oh, you compile it this way. So you compile on your desktop, you copy it over to the Raspberry Pi, and then you run it. Okay, so let's try that. So it looks like it's up. And so I'll go into 06, because that's what we're working with now. And let's create a part one. And then I'll go into, I'll do, code, Visual Studio Code in part one. Let's create a module file, RPR1. I like that name, RPR1. So, okay, so that's that. And then let's have a directory um, and we do CMD for command and within it we'll put our main.go and then we'll do package main. And you know what? We are, actually have some code over here already. So why not copy all of this? Nothing interesting here. So yes, so platform, new adapter from Raspberry Pi, um, new LED driver. And I'm assuming this is a built-in LED, but we'll see. And then every second blink it, and that's it. Okay, so the next thing they said is to compile it, go to the command line and say, go ARM6, and then go architecture, ARM architecture, and then Linux, and then Go Build, and blah, blah, blah. Well, it's saying that if you have the R Raspberry Pi A+, plus, which is what we have, then we should use six. So this command seems to be our friend. So let's copy this, and we'll go back here, and we'll do CD into CMD, and we have our main that go here. And so if I do bad main, Yep, that's our main at Go program that we just wrote. So I'll paste the command here and I'll do main. And this should give us uh, executable for Linux. And we can test that by doing this. And it says, yep, ELF for ARM. Good. So what did it say to do? SCP it over to our Raspberry Pi. So SCP main, um, let's call it pi at 10.10.100.183 and into the home directory there and let's do call it hmm, gobot gobot yeah gobot is good enough and then password so yep that copied over uh, that is good and then now they're saying you can run it. So this is run the command remotely. And so we can certainly do that. Minus T. So I enclose this like this. Okay, starting work. And we should look for here to see if anything is gonna start blinking. And starting device. 
Well, I don't see anything blinking. Hmm. Okay. So. Maybe it is working. Um, at least we don't have an error. We know that the code is on there. So what we should probably do is try to see if we can, yeah, I don't know what the light that is, but LED is that. But maybe we should try and see if we can get another GPIO to work. So let's control C here. So I can't tell from up there which one is pin one. Unless I'm missing something. Okay, it just says GPIO underneath there. But it doesn't say which one is pin one. Um, but if I imagine that this is mounted on there, then I see that all is ground. And then going across there, are some other pins. Okay, so I'll use this instead indirectly to tell me which one is pin seven. Um, so pin seven. P6, P5, okay, that looks like grown, okay. So D7 is right here. So I'll be, what I'll do is I'll turn this off, connect this, well, actually, um, it's just easier to see from, oh, okay, let's count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The eight pin, on that back row is pin seven. So I'll pause here because it'll take me a while. I'll connect an LED from there to ground and then see if it actually works. Okay, I'm back. And so what I did was I shut down um, Raspbian. And so now I'll connect. What I did was I got one of my groove um, shield here for um, LED and I'll connect ground and so on. So looking at this board as cheat, uh, it says grung is this pin, and then five volts is all the way over there. So that means that I can do something like this. Grung, so I'm using a groove shield cable to a female um, connector, and then this is v five volts. Let me make sure that you guys can see four, five, six, seven, eight. So it was the eight pin. So now I'll put this there. And let's see if I power this back up, it should work. Well, I'll have to log in and run the Go code. But remember, if this works, I don't mind. I don't mind logging in to the board. And let's see, let's put it on there to make sure that you can see it. We expect that LED to blink when I run the code from here. So let's do it again. Oh, I gotta wait for it to come up. Okay, it's up now. Let's try logging in or running this code remotely. And it's running, running, and it says working. But I don't see anything happening here. I can go along the entire row of this thing and try to figure out which one we're actually controlling. So we struggle. go. So really the pin we want, pin seven, is actually, um, let me see, four in. So it's P4. All right, so even though the code has seven, pin seven, it actually maps to four. I don't know why it's that nuts, but I'll try and figure out the mapping. Um, but at least we can see that we're controlling that LED there. So this means that now um, I can develop. See you in the next video where I'm gonna get the remote um, development working and I'll try and play with that motor shield. And since we know that we can control the GPIO from the Raspberry Pi, if we can control do remote development, well, that's great because we can just connect, do our development, upload it, test it, and run it immediately. And that's going to be really nice. Okay. So take care. Um, let me know what you think. Um, okay. Before I get out of here, one thing I want to draw your attention to is I'll be 
trying to post videos more frequently and that means that um, in order for me to do that i have to trade the time that i would normally spend editing so which means the video is going to have less edit done on them which means that oh, you're going to hear pronunciation you're going to hear my redos you're going to hear my accent come in a little bit probably more frequently you're going to hear some slang all that good stuff or bad stuff but hopefully that means that oh, i can get to post more frequently if i don't have to go through the video and take out some of that stuff that when I get super comfortable, I, you know, let slip through. Um, other than that, in the next video, I'll try and get the remote login for the Raspberry Pi working. And then, so we'll do some development remotely. And with that, we're going to be able to test that motor control board. And if that works, then we have our, I think we have a robot platform. We can go ahead and say, this is our platform, knowing that we can still use GoBot and we have a good shield we'll, we'll test it and see all right if you haven't hit that subscribe button hit it click notification so you can get notification when the videos get posted if you like what you're seeing please spread the word if you're not subscribed definitely subscribe and please give me feedback let me know what you think if you have suggestion about how we should do this i'm open to that too take care bye